Hello. Right, so why did that happen? Why did I manage to blow up that glove? Let's have a look at something else here. I have a milk container which is empty. It's empty and it's a little bit squashed. Um, I have some hot water, I'm just boiling the kettle. I'm gonna show you a couple of experiments uh, and then we're gonna do something else. Then we'll come back and see if we can work out what's gone on. Right, so here's my milk bottle. Here's some freshly boiled water from the kettle. Now watch what I do. Just a little bit of water in the bottom. Put a lid on, give it a shake. Look at the shape of it now. Why has that happened? There's only about that much water in the bottom. I'm now I'm going to put it in a bucket oh, of cold water. Bucket of cold water, bucket of cold water. It's still lit, sealed up. Comes out of the cold water and it's squashed again. Why does that happen? Let's do that again. Tip that out. It's all cold now. A bit of hot in. Just a little bit. Give it a shake. Now it's full. Puffed up like a balloon. Cold water. Cold water. Pull it all down. Give it a shake. And it squishes again. So we've got two questions there. Why did that, uh, my own personal protective equipment, my own bit of PPE, why did that inflate when I blew air into it? Why does it get bigger? Why doesn't it not say the same size? And why, when I put hot water in this thing, only a little bit of hot water, why does the whole thing puff out? Uh, so we'll come back and we'll look at that after I've shown you another experiment. Because this lesson is really easy. Uh, it's all about gas pressure. Um, and before I show you my little experiment, we're just going to remind ourselves of a few things we've learned about particles. We have particles in a solid, have a fixed shape. Uh, particles in a liquid have a loose shape. They can uh, flow over each other, but they take the shape of the container. Particles in a gas fill the container uh, and are flying around in all directions. And they do this because we're adding energy, thermal energy, heat, if you like. So you've got a solid here, and as that vibrates, as it vibrates, it has more and more energy. Uh, the hotter it gets, it vibrates more. Um, and in fact, as it vibrates more, each individual particle needs a little bit more space to do the vibrating in, which is why solids, when you heat them up, they expand, they take up some more space. Uh, and we have to make allowances for this. You'll see this in metals. Um, if you take a tray out of your oven, uh, it's quite loose when the oven's cold, when the oven's hot, it's not so easy to move the trays around because they've got hot and they've expanded because each of the individual uh, particles that make up the metal sh shaking a little bit more and taking up a little bit more space um, and so when something takes up more space it's not it's not any heavier it's actually takes up more space but it weighs the same it has the same mass so in fact it is less dense now and you have uh, fluids you have liquids and gases which are less dense um, as they get hotter um, which is why if I was to say to you hot air you're probably thinking the word rises. We know that hot air rises, but why is that? Uh, and it's because as the particles uh, are vibrating more, they're taking up more space, you get fewer particles in a particular area, and so it is less dense. It's the same in liquids. If you've got a lava lamp or you've seen a lava lamp, uh, the hotter the liquid is, the more those particles, uh, more energy they've got, so the more space uh, they need to take up, so it's less dense, and so the hotter liquid rises to the top, and the colder liquid falls to the bottom and gets heated up, and then that rises to the top again, and we call that a convection current, and that's how lava lamps work. Now, having said all that, uh, and knowing what you know about density, I'm gonna show you a little experiment that I set up in my kitchen, uh, which has got uh, some water and some vegetable oil, which floats on top of the water, and then I've got an ice cube which I've made with a bit of red uh, food dye inside it. And we're gonna see what happens to that. Okay, I'll uh, see you in a minute. So we have got, are you filming? Yeah. Filming, right. So we've got some water and we've got some vegetable oil on top of the water. Vegetable oil is less dense or lighter than water, so it floats on top. Now ice floats on top of water because it's less dense, uh, but does ice float on top of oil? I have here some ice with red food coloring in. Will it float? Will it sink? What do we reckon? 
it floats sort of in the middle. I've got a green one as well, let's put that in. Now what's going to happen, that green hasn't frozen properly, let's try another one here. Let's put a green in. Where's that one going? Is green lighter than red or was it just not frozen? What's the red doing? Is that melting? Can you see what's coming down from that green? Can we get a close up on that green dribbling down? Whoa! Whoa! What about that red? What's that going to do? What's happening here with this red? Whoa! Oh, look at that! <laughs> Little red drips coming down. Now, where's that going to go? Is that just going to sit there? Is it going to work its way through? Fall down? Bro. Is there another drip coming? Now, because that is red water and it's cold water, hot water rises because it's less dense. So as that's cold, look at that go. Bruh. I'm impressed, aren't you? <laughs> wow. Are we done? Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to do it done for now. This what we'll do is we'll come back in a minute. <laughs> we'll come back in a minute. Tea. And, uh, and see what happens. Cool. Harry, make some tea. Right, so everyone's cleared off, but it's still still going. It's still falling, the cold stuff is falling. It's like, a, like an upside down lava lamp where the cold stuff is just falling to the bottom. There you go. And we're back. And so you saw that experiment. Uh, now we're going to go back and think about the two things that we had at the start of the lesson where I, I inflated a, uh, a rubber glove because I haven't got any balloons here uh, and that got bigger which is, just makes sense nothing too magical about that but what's happening is as I'm putting more air more gas into that balloon um, the gas particles that are in there are moving around all over the place and they're colliding with or they're hitting the sides of the rubber glove or balloon if you like and as they hit the side they push that side out and that's what causes the pressure inside gases because the particles are colliding with the walls of the container and the more collisions that you have uh, every second uh, the more pressure there isn't just pushing those sides out like that uh, also if the gases are hotter they're moving around more they've got more energy and so they're colliding harder with the walls of the container and that is why this thing happened as well I put a small amount of uh, liquid water in the bottom there uh, and the the gas that was filled it up the air from the room was relatively cold still the temperature of the room but then when I shook it the heat from the water heated up the, the air particles inside there. So each of the air particles was more energetic. It had more energy. And so they're moving about more. They're hitting the sides of the milk container more. And so they're pushing that out. So if you increase the temperature of a gas, you increase the pressure of a gas. Because if you increase the temperature, the particles are whizzing around faster. They've got more energy. And so they're gonna be punching against the sides of the containers harder and pushing that out, which is why if you increase the temperature, you increase the pressure. And that's it, that's the lesson. Quite straightforward, wasn't it? Okay, next lesson, uh, maybe a little bit longer, um, but some of them are quite short and quite straightforward. But just bear in mind all this whole thing about particles and energy and lots of physics and lots of chemistry gets a lot easier if you do that. Okay, see you next time. Uh, meanwhile, check out more Mr. Graves science videos on YouTube. Cheers.